This is Dysnomia, the only moon of the dwarf planet Eris. Not including comets, Eris is currently the second furthest body from the Sun at a distance of 96 astronomical units. Just a heads up, an astronomical unit, or AU, is a common unit of measurements used by astronomers, and is the average distance between the Earth and Sun. One AU is just shy of 150 million kilometres, or 93 million miles. Or you could take the wacky science is so cool route, and one AU is 17.9 billion double-decker buses lined up end to end, cause, you know, you could totally visualise what a couple billion buses look like, right? Sigh. Anyway, the official furthest body from the Sun right now is a dwarf planet lovingly named V774104, which is currently 103 AU away. However, V774104 doesn't have any moons, although further observations are required to confirm this, whereas Eris most certainly does, making Dysnomia the furthest moon from the Sun. Yay! Sadly, Dysnomia won't hold this record forever as Eris is in a high eccentricity orbit, meaning its orbit around the Sun is an oval shape instead of a circle. At the moment, Eris is in the wider part of its orbit, but in the year 2268 it will be in the narrower bit, and only 37 AU from the Sun. In that time, one of the many other dwarf planets with a moon will be entering the wider part of its oval orbit, and in the year 2046, the nameless moon of 2007-OR10 will snatch the title of most distant moon from the Sun, so remind me to make a video about that in about 30 years. But back to the moon in question. Dysnomia was first spotted on the 10th of September back in 2005 using adaptive optics at the Keck Observatory in Hawaii. It was discovered by Professor Mike Brown and his team while they were observing the four brightest objects of the Kuiper Belt to see if any of them had some moons. Just so you know, the Kuiper Belt is essentially like the asteroid belt, only much further from the Sun, far more massive, and contains several icy dwarf planets, dwarf planets such as Pluto. It's only fitting that Mike Brown discovered Dysnomia, after all, it was him and his team who discovered its parent planet, Eris, just a few months earlier. In the tradition of naming planets, after Greek and Roman gods, and also their moons after deities related to said gods, Dysnomia was named after the demon of lawlessness, daughter of the Greek goddess of strife and discord called, you guessed it, Eris. But before Eris got its official title, it was nicknamed Xena, inspired by the badass warrior princess from the hit 90s TV show. Plus, Xena has an X in it, and the team wanted to retain some relation to the tantalising search for Planet X. So when it was discovered that Xena had a moon, it was only fitting to call her celestial sidekick Gabrielle, after the assistant slash comrade in arms from the TV series. A bit of TV trivia for you here, Xena was portrayed by Lucy Lawless, which kinda sounds like lawlessness, right? Well, it's no coincidence as Mike Brown is both a fan of the princess and the deity of Eris, and so wanted to keep the connection between the two. By now you're probably wondering why I'm calling this moon Dysnomia as opposed to Dysnomia. Again, we have Professor Brown to thank for this. He was inspired by James Christie, who discovered the Plutonian moon of Sharon, and chose a name which shares the first few letters of his wife's name, Charlene. As you guessed it, Mike Brown's wife is called Diana, which he often shortens to Di, hence Dysnomia. While other husbands buy petrol station flowers for their wives, some decide to name a moon after them. Okay, enough about the name, let's talk about the moon itself. Dysnomia takes just over 15 and 3 quarter days to complete an orbit around Eris, and has an orbital radius of about 37 and a half thousand kilometres, making it 10 times closer to Eris than our own moon is to us. But not much else is known about the moon at this point. However, using just a few properties of Dysnomia, astronomers were able to figure out something huge. See, when Eris was first discovered, its mass was unknown, but when it was found to have a moon, said mass could be calculated using Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Using the time taken for Dysnomia to orbit Eris, and by measuring the distance between the two, astronomers were finally able to calculate the mass of Eris, which was found to be 27% heavier than Pluto. Now before the mass of Eris was determined, Pluto's status as a planet was already being called into question. This was because when Eris was first discovered, they found it was very similar in size to Pluto, which instantly raised the question, do we class Eris as a planet? After all, it's the same size as Pluto, so why not? It was only when Dysnomia was discovered and its orbital features were measured that astronomers realised Eris actually weighs more than Pluto. The International Astronomical Union then realised they had two choices, either grant Eris official planet status, along with potentially many other yet to be found planets, or declassify Pluto and redefine the term planet. They went with the latter option, and thus Pluto was stripped of its rank of planet. While it was the discovery of Eris that fired the Pluto debate, it was Dysnomia that provided the concrete evidence that secured Pluto's fate. Eris lived up to its name as God of Strife, and Mike Brown has certainly earned his notorious Twitter handle of Pluto Killer.